Why are you here? I got this situation where I need your help. I need bad friends. Sylvester Stallone and Jason Statham make a return to the big screen in Expendables 4, the latest in the action thriller series. But the question is, is it any good? And movie critic who always keeps it real, Gray Drake, with her review of the new movie. Welcome back to the show, Gray. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so keep it real for us. Like the summer, this series is over. Oh, Ooh. no. Yeah. Listen, I'm a person that owns a piece of clothing that has a skull on the sleeve. Yes, okay. and you're wearing it right now. While I'm wearing we're it. Video. And, and I will tell you that this has got some return characters Jason Statham, Sylvester Stallone, Randy Couture, uh -huh. Dolph Lundgren, but. It just, the magic's not there because no. this is about stunt casting, right? So basically, you should go back to Expendables 2 at their height. This one just wasn't memorable for me as a fan, and it breaks my heart to say that because... Because you do like it. I love yeah. it, and they're trying to build, you know, somebody's building a nuclear weapon, and the guys are all trying to stop them. They've also added some women to the series again, uh -huh. like Megan Fox. Oh. Just oh. doesn't add up to a whole bunch. She's so. skull on the sleeve, people. Skull on the sleeve. And the she didn't proof, like it. The proof is on the sleeve, and I was disappointed, and... I know they're gonna. I know Jason Statham is not the person to criticize. No, he's my favorite. He would be the only reason I would watch that. I'm a huge fan. Okay, Jason yeah. Statham. Well, okay. So this next one, mm -hmm. you, you're starting to see the billboards up everywhere. People are talking about it. It's it's based on a real life event that we were all captivated by. <laughs> yes. How's Dumb Money? Couldn't take my eyes off of it. Oh, oh good. Okay. okay. Yeah. Wall Street well, thinks we're stop. dumb. Yeah. Period. Yeah. We are the little guy and we lose every single time. So on the internet, a guy named Roaring Kitty on Reddit decided that GameStop was undervalued and Wall Street was betting on it to fail. Mm -hmm. So he rallied the troops, the regular everyday people, and together they changed the way that Wall Street operates. Like. I get so fiery about this yes. because it also just happened during the pandemic. It did. And we needed a win yeah. as human beings. And so in the movie, you've got Paul Dano from the latest Batman movie, yeah. and he's playing Roaring Kitty along with really great talent like Anthony Ramos from In the Heights, America Ferreira in the Barbie her. movie. Yes. And then the bad guys are Nick Offerman, Seth Rogen, Vincent D'Onofrio. This movie really feels a lot like The Big Short. It does? Oh. Yes. That, I was wondering about that. So the other night, uh, my fiance and I were in an Uber. We were talking to the driver because we talked to every driver that <laughs> yes. we ever have. And we saw a billboard for it, and we were like, I wonder if it's going to be like The Big Short. Definitely. It, there's also so many questions, I feel like, that I still have that I don't, <laughs> like, you remember it happening, yeah. but you don't remember some of the specifics that I'm like, sure. I want to watch this just to iron out my questions. And also, finance is pretty complicated. The movie exactly. does a good job yeah. of laying things Breaking out for down. you, but also, spoiler alert, nobody in finance knows anything. Uh. They're all guessing. <laughs> so <laughs> It's kind of like the weather, I think, with Paul, isn't it? <laughs> Hey! Ouch! Ouch! Paul, leave me alone! Right. Oh my gosh! How did I even know to school for this? Ooh. Okay, great. So let's talk about finally the Continental. I had to ask you, who's in this movie? Sure. The biggest name in this is Mel Gibson. Ah, he's, okay. he's running the Continental in the, in the '70s, mm -hmm. and what this is is a three-episode quote series, oh. but they're all 90 minutes long. Oh yeah. So this is okay. like three prequels to the John Wick series, and this oh. first one that's out today is basically setting up that Winston, who's played in the movies by Ian McShane, mm -hmm. as a younger man, his brother steals something critical to the Continental's operation. Okay. So they have to run away from the person that's running the Continental. And basically, like, New York City in the 70s gets caught in the crossfire. There's a lot of great music. There's, like, a percentage of the fighting that we've come to expect from the John Wick yeah. series. Mm -hmm. For me, at the end of the day, I was kind of looking for a character that I loved as much as John mm -hmm. Wick. And you didn't find one? Didn't quite find it yet, but it doesn't mean the series is a waste. It's uh -huh. sexy, it's stylish, you know, and you get to see all these characters you love in the movies mm -hmm. as younger versions. Okay. So, so should hardcore John Wick fans see The Continental? I say take a chance. Okay. okay. Yeah, there's something there, but it's just not really what I was expecting. 90 minutes a piece sounds a little like an investment <laughs> to me that I don't know that I'm going to make. But yeah, it is. Okay. I mean, maybe if you feel like the need to just sort of purge some bad juju and you want to okay. like punch, you know, pretend oh. you're punching people, okay. skip yeah. your kickbox class yes. and like go watch The Continental maybe. Okay. Okay. This okay. is me punching. Fair it's enough. very ineffective. <laughs>
Great. Thank you so much. We really appreciate you being here.